people, by the people, for the people. Whatever happened to FUBU anyway, Larry? I don't know. I wouldn't have put no money on their stock in the first place. But what's happening, ladies and gentlemen? You're in the building on the life gain of Benjamin's a current culture. It's me. It's the other half, the living legend, Larry. How's my living legend brother feeling tonight? Man, I'm doing my thing. Just, you know, living life, hoping that this market opens up on uh on, on Monday morning and uh and goes ham again. You oh, know, I, I, I might have some sad news for you about <laughs> what I think is gonna happen to the marketplace this week. And everybody, that's what we're here for. We're here to give you that Monday morning quarterback game plan for the stock market based on all the things we found this weekend and the latest news coming out. So let me give you guys a snippet of what's going on. But first, if you're finding me and Larry for the first time, please subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to Larry's channel. He does tech, black tech YouTuber, he does an excellent job. Um, be sure to follow us both on the Instagram. For those of you who didn't know, I just had that baby girl. And you like to see pictures of her controlling my mind as if she's wearing the mind stone that they have in Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> Jump on the gram and you'll see her controlling me. And also, ladies and gentlemen, in the video <laughs> description, there is a link for a black stock investor group. They're doing big things in that group. Go over there and check them out. They're even trying to do what Reddit did with black people and black stocks. Pool together mm -hmm. money and we're going to see if we can get one of those stocks from that group to go up. Um, so what we're covering tonight the fallout continues with Robin Hood. They still flim flamming, ladies and gentlemen. And I'll discuss that. What stock should you jump in this week? And I'll just, like I was telling Larry, they made it easy for me. All the 50 stocks that Robin Hood plans to limit tomorrow, February the 1st, those are all the ones you need to get into. Some of them are good long term holds. But most of them are going to be good quick cash grabs if they get pumped up. We'll discuss that as well. And we've got some people that we know famous that have lost a lot of money on GameStop because they had money tied into the hedge fund. <clears throat> and Larry, before we get into all that, I want to give people context first and foremost. I'm yep. assuming everybody who's hearing us, Larry, has had an opportunity to digest um, the events that happened this week from Reddit picking the stocks that were shorted and pumping them up with money to the fallout from billionaires complaining that they're losing money. Oh, who the hell cares? Well, right. a lot of people are upset with Robin Hood because they limit the retail investors ability to make money. And I have a beef with them as well. But we also have folks upset with the news because it seems as though the news is conspiring with the man, so Big to speak. Boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's a hey, big M MSNBC really just was their coverage was shameful. You mean CNBC? I mean, sorry, CNBC. Yes, right. And so we've got a piece of news footage from CNBC that we're going to break down and just kind of explain why people are upset with their coverage of the news. It'll all tie into the stocks you guys should be looking at buying tomorrow. Take a look. That's right, Deirdre. This is key. I talked to a ton of analysts and even some early Robinhood investors last night who say the decision in 2018 by Robinhood to get rid of a middleman, so they now clear and custody trades in-house, is really the crux of what's happening this week. It kicked off Robinhood's needing to restrict uh, those trades of GameStop. So going back to 2018, this was a major investment. It was really seen as a money saver at the time. Vlad Tenev told me back in 2018 that this would help them expand quickly. He likened it to Apple deciding to build its own chips or Amazon investing in fulfillment centers. So instead of relying on a third party like most of those fintechs do, so think of Square, who use a middleman and another clearinghouse, Robinhood instead settles and clears customer trades. They provide custody for assets, and that in turn gives them a bigger slice of the revenue behind trading. But it also raises the bar for how much money Robinhood needs to have in-house to meet those capital requirements. They need to send cash every day to the depository trust company, also known as the DTC. And that can really change on a dime based on trading volumes. I'm told that the D DTC increased the amount that firms needed for margin calls, especially on GameStop. Robinhood, of course, told CNBC repeatedly that this was not a liquidity issue and these moves were preemptive. But remember, 
Robinhood raised a billion dollars this morning from some existing investors. You had Sequoia and Ribbit in there. They had to tap their banks for a line of credit and told some customers that they might need to close some of those at-risk positions. All right, folks, let me just um, summarize that. But before I do, let me say what's up to my buddy, Nate. Nate, welcome to the show. We like to bring on subscribers. And if you are a subscriber out there and you want to join us one of these Sundays live, we discuss stocks. Come on, boy, let me know. We'll get you up here. But Nate, how you feeling tonight? Good. Took me forever. Here we go. To get signed in, but but I got it. Hey, well, you're here. Nate, how you doing, man? Good. Hey, Larry. And, you know, what we're discussing is how the news has tried to been spin the egregious behaviors of Robin Hood as if it's not their fault. And maybe the crux of this thing is that it's really not their fault and trying to spin it as if it's not a liquidity issue. Okay, you both are smart men. Larry, if I have money to run my business and something happens to my business where there's a part that needs funding and I don't have enough funds to get that part funneled, what is that, Larry? That is that is purely a liquidity issue. That is it's a like, fucking it's a liquidity problem. And it's crazy because when they were explaining it, they were trying to deny it during the explanation. It didn't make any sense. I was like, dude, you're explaining that you don't have the money while trying to explain right. us to this, while at the same time saying that you do have the money. That is not that is right. not a, a liquidity issue while you're explaining what a liquidity issue is. It, it so, just was it was asinine. Not on, and then they tried to use wordage that a lot of people aren't going to understand. Simple and plain, ladies and gentlemen, Robin Hood is just an interface for you to click in what stocks you want. They have to send that information to a clearinghouse that is a Wall Street hedge fund, which goes right back to the original problem. And once they have the money to send it to that Wall Street hedge fund, your stock and orders get put in. Now, then we go right back to the problem that we're, we're fussing about right now. Robinhood, TD, Schwab, and all these other brokerages go through the same process, which is how they're able to give you these trades commission-free. But the issue we have with them, ladies and gentlemen, when people get in front of a microphone and tell you to pull your damn self up by the bootstraps, you need to have emergency money for six months in case something happens. This is how consumers are feeling with Robinhood and these other trading sites because there was an opportunity for the retail investor to make a game. And that game was thwarted again by big money on Wall Street because these clearinghouses are ran in part by hedge funds, which should be illegal. Um, Nate, since you're the new, new kid on the block, you're our subscriber fan, talk to me about the way you've been feeling about the events of the stock market this week. Uh-oh, we lost you, Nate. We can't hear you. He's on mute. There right, we I'm go. Back. Okay, yeah. there you go. I've, I've just sat back and watched it. I haven't I haven't taken any part in it. Um, it seems like it's always, you know, it's like, well, it's going to go down at any moment, but it sure doesn't seem to be happening. Right, right. Larry, how do you feel about these events? And do you feel as though the media is trying to play both sides of the fence or really just trying to prop up hedge funds? I really feel like they're they're out there protecting the hedge funds and the big guys. And I'll tell you the thing that bothers me is the is with TD and Schwab and those guys. Like I feel like Robin Hood made this move of limiting the um, limiting trading on these equities because they were trying to protect themselves because they weren't liquid. Right. I think Schwab and TD saw that that Robin Hood did that and mm -hmm. then felt like okay, we have cover to follow to 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 take their lead. We have cover to say, oh, it's not a liquidity issue. It, it we're protecting the we're protecting the investors. And mm -hmm. I don't think that TD or Schwab, either one of them have liquidity issues. I think they did that simply to protect the big guys. Right. And, and I think they used Robin Hood doing it first as as cover to do so themselves. And and so for I mean they're both shamed. They should both really be ashamed of themselves. And there should and I think the government's gonna need to step in and and look at what happened and possibly come up with some sort of regulation on this. But Robin Hood should be ashamed of themselves for a different reason. They should be ashamed of themselves because they lied to their customers and to the public and just really lost trust and you know the 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 other guys 
they're, they should be ashamed, but I feel like we're not, uh, for me personally, I'm not as, as disgusted with them because they're protecting the biz, got big guys, and that's what they always do. That's what we expect from them. That's what this whole thing was about. This whole, this whole thing with, with all these short sellers getting bent over, that's what this whole thing was about. So for TD and Schwab to, to follow Robin Hood's lead and protect the hedge funds and the other big guys, it's to be expected. But for Robin Hood to do it, I mean, that well, one stings a bit. It does sting because Robin Hood came into the game with the expectation that everyone should have opportunity in the marketplace. That was their calling card, Larry, that um, stock market investing should be democratized. That was their calling card. I mean, their name is Robin Hood, for crying out loud. And then for yeah. you to pull this stunt, it does sting worse when you do it. So one thing we're also going to cover tonight in this fast 30 minutes, ladies and gentlemen, is other brokerage houses you can go with that are comparable to Robin Hood that don't charge commissions. And one of them is owned by a minority. And so to go ahead and get into the meat and potatoes of this, go ahead, Larry. Lamar, before you go over there, so just on this subject, I want to say one thing I think Robin Hood might have done unintentionally is lowered the valuation of their of their of their company for when they when they decide to go public. I think I think what would have maybe have been, I don't know, let's just give a random number. Let's say that the company would have gone public and it would have been worth, you know, three billion dollars. I think maybe it's worth one now. You well, know? Here's I mean, the issue, I, Larry. Check this out. In the last three days, are you two guys familiar with the other stock app called Webull? Have y'all heard of that yeah. one? Yeah. Their yeah. percentage of people jumping on the app, Larry, is up 29% in three days. Three. Yeah. And where do you think them people is coming from? But here's the yeah. problem. We bull did the same damn thing Robin Hood did. <laughs> they done the same thing. <laughs> so they didn't even make my list of, of brokerages you guys can go take a look at. If you... Yeah. Limited what people could do any of these days. You ain't make my list. And part of what we're talking about with Robin Hood is I'm still telling people I'm going to ride with Robin Hood. I'm going to treat this like I've been with a girlfriend or a significant other for five years. This is the first time they've hurt my trust really, really badly. And I'm going to ride with them and see if we can get over this. But I'm going to get me a backup girlfriend. I can just tell you that right now. I've got to have me a backup girlfriend because this cannot happen again and I'm going to stay. Um, it's for all those who joined us because you want to know where you can take your stocks. I said in the beginning of this video, everything that is on the Robin Hood limit list, 50 some odd stocks this week, all that is all that is good stocks for you guys to buy, whether you're buying it for short term purposes or long term. It's just that more short term stocks are on that list. So I'm going to let you guys see this. Then I'm going to pull the list up and we're going to talk about the ones you should get for what specific purpose. Well, if Robinhood, again, limited the amount of shares that uh, customers can buy for certain stocks. We've got a couple new names to add to that list. Beyond Meat, Starbucks, GM. So not the names that we've been talking about. You think of GameStop, for example. There are now 50 names in total on that list. I just spoke to Robinhood. It's not entirely clear why they're adding names like Starbucks. They did say that this has to do with market volatility. They're monitor monitoring stocks by the name. They're looking at each stock and seeing if it fits a certain criteria. We don't have a lot of detail on exactly what that is. They say, though, it is a fluid situation, and they are updating their blog posts. But again, the list of restricted stocks now includes 50 names. Back to you, Wilf. <laughs> Wilf, Robinhood again. That, that is pure, but man, I'm, Nate, I'm trying to be nice since you're here. I'm trying not to use words, that. try not to use words that would make people think that, you know, um, I'm full of anger. I'm full of rage and I might turn green like the Hulk. But <laughs> this, this is a pure travesty of capitalism because every facet we go, the big guys who are rich always tell people, well, you got to take risk to make money. Whenever you invest, there's always inherent risk. What we're seeing right now is the kinks, the, the foibles in capitalism. 
we are actually seeing in real time, and it started a little while ago, four years ago, all the crux that go on in capitalism that help the rich stay rich. There's a reason why we're having a K-shaped recovery. So let me show you guys these stocks on the list, on this list, and we're going to break them down, which ones you should get your hands on. So number one, let's start with this list. And let, before I say that, let me get back to Robin Hood. Two wealthy Silicon Valley investors got on CNBC and said they completely support what is happening with Wall Street bets pumping up these stocks because the rich hedge funds been doing it for years in their little secret dinners and been getting away with it. Robin Hood, fellas, has the audacity to put two companies on this list that is owned by Chopmoth Papatia, who is one who's been cheering on this movement. He's been <laughs> cheering it on. And they've got both of his acquisitions on the list. Oh, my God. I can't make this up. So let's go through this. American Airlines, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to just break them down as we go through them. American Airlines, if you're going to get that, just know that that is not a long-term hold. That is a you hold it and you hope they're going to pump it up. Aurora Cannabis, I would say that one is one you hold long-term and it might get pumped up short-term as well. First, Mag First Majestic Silver, that one is both short-term and long-term because remember, precious metals, ladies and gentlemen, is always a hedge against inflation. And that company has pretty decent numbers. Um, AMC, that is strictly a short-term buy. You're hoping it gets pumped up. AMD, that is short-term and long-term. And why the hell is AMD up there anyway? I know why. Because Reddit put out a list of other stocks that they plan to attack. But AMD is a great company, ladies and gentlemen, um, and you can hold them long term. Black no, no, let, me just, let me stop you. They're not attacking the stocks. They're really attacking the short sellers. Right, right. Excuse me for that. They are attacking the short sellers, not the company of short sellers. Um, BlackBerry, that one is a short term hold. Well, maybe I'm going to say short term to intermediate because they just signed a strategic partnership. So if you get that one, you might have some legs beyond what's going on right now. Bed Bath and Beyond, strictly short term. Um, I think that's Beyond Meat. That one could be long term. And let me get on to the next list. Here we go. Um, the coverage help. That one is speculation. So it's short term. Curious, speculation, short term. Castor Maritime, speculation, short term. Express, speculation, short term. Ezego Technologies, speculation, short term. Now, folks, there's a pattern to this. The ones that have potential, in some cases, to be short-term and long-term holds, look at what Robinhood is doing. They're only allowing you to have one share. General Motors is definitely long-term and short-term. You can only get one share. GameStop Corporation, I'm definitely going to say it's short-term, but they're only giving you one share because the price is already pumped up too high. Um, I've never heard of this grand terror energy so i don't know how to how to put that one for you invest your investor purposes but they're giving you five shares hymns that's the big one you see on commercials i think that one has long-term viability as well the short term one share nvo pharmaceuticals one share and the one that chop my papatia owns is that social capital i own 100 shares of that and they're limiting you to one damn share what in the hell and then his other one, he has two. He has IPOE and IPOF, um, social capital. They're limiting you to one share. Jaguar Health, five. Cost Corporation, ladies and gentlemen, that's a short-term grab. I've never heard of Linnell, whatever that is. Moderna. Moderna is a great company to hold long-term. They pay a solid dividend. So this could be a short-term and a long-term. Naked Brand Foods. Um, don't know much about them. So I would say speculation on that one. Nokia. I actually have a call on Nokia. That one is definitely short term. Um, let's hope they pump that one up. Um, Novarix. I don't know much about that one, but it's giving you one share. So I would say short term. Open Door Technology, ladies and gentlemen, is another one backed by Chopma Papatia. A long term company for sure. They're doing things in real estate that are futuristic. So you want to get that one long term and hold it. Rocket Companies, that one does mortgages. That is a good long term hold with hopefully a short term benefit. And the last of the list, ladies and gentlemen, Rolls Royce. 
Well, y'all know every rapper and they mamas be talking about Rolls Royces, so you definitely can get that one for long term and short term. But yeah, but start, you don't say it's about Rolls Royces. They make jet engines. Yes, yes, definitely. So you can definitely get that one for both purposes. Starbucks, ladies and gentlemen, this should, the reason this is on the list is because this is a great long-term and short-term company, and they also was going down this past week. So you can do both with that one. I don't know anything about Shoals and Siebert finance, Financials, so that one's kind of speculation, but at the very least, short-term grab. Now, Larry and my man, Nate, I share Silver Trust. I did an emergency video because Reddit specifically named that they're not only are they buying this ETF, but they're also buying up silver from the companies underneath this ETF. And there was a report put out this weekend that one of those companies under that ETF is sold out of physical silver. So ladies Ooh. and gentlemen, I just told you before, precious metals are always a good long-term buy because they're a hedge against inflation. So you definitely want to get that one. And we're going to talk about, since you can't get a lot from Robinhood, other companies, you can open up an account and get some this week. Then we've got Sundell Growers, don't know anything. Then we've got the Diriox um, Daily Semiconductor Bulls. That one is a good company, long-term hold. They do the same thing AMD does. Sorrento Therapeutics, short-term cash grab. Star Peak Energy, ladies and gentlemen, a SPAC. Um, typically, I don't put a lot of money in SPACs, but with these SPACs have been hitting the market, Larry, what have they been doing? Going to the moon. Yeah. So you might want to get that one and hold on to it. Then you got Tinesco. I don't know them well. T and something holdings. That's another SPAC. And then finally, Tootsie Roll, short-term grab, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Travago. Um, short term grab, and that's only because um, everything is still closed because of the coronavirus. But when they open back up, that one's when you can hold workhorse. How much money have we made off workhorse, Larry? I even told what? Nate about workhorse when I first met him at the Tesla supercharger. <laughs> I don't understand why they have workhorse on there because workhorse is in the Reddit transcript. Like everything that you have seen, ladies and gentlemen, is in the Reddit transcripts. And then you've got Quailtricks International and Zoomedica Zoom Court. All these stocks have been targeted by people in Wall Street bets, Larry. That's why they're on the list. And Workers these, has, a, has a chance to blow up by itself, though. I mean, especially since Joe Biden is saying he's going to take the entire federal uh, vehicle fleet electric and then you right. know in the next whatever decade or something. I mean, mm -hmm. Workhorse is, is already working on contracts with the with the Post, the office. post office, if they yeah. can get if they can secure some contracts with different agencies, I don't know if they're going to try and secure a contract with I imagine they're not going to secure the entire federal government with one company. But mm -mm. maybe they, you know, maybe they get a contract with uh, the State Department or maybe they get right. a contract with the FBI or whoever else. I mean, that's I mean, the stock seems like it's, po it's poised to move without any sort of, uh, right. of help. Yeah, it's going to move regardless. That's why I said some of these, ladies and gentlemen, are some that you buy and hold long term. Or for those of you trying to get in and get out with a quick cash grab, I highlighted those for you as well. But there's one more issue we've got to cover. That's your game plan. You pick up those. And then the famous words that investors always say, ladies and gentlemen, is you buy the dip. And everything dipped last week. Every quality stock took a dip last week. So I don't Nate, care do you have if anything like, on that list. What was that? I was asking Nate, does he have anything on that list? Right, right. Um, yeah, the uh, silver, SLV. He's got, he's got SLV, SLV. Okay. yeah. Yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, the other piece of advice we're saying is buy the dip. So if you've got some growth companies that you already like, everything was red the last three days of the week, your Tesla was red. And I can tell you that is going to go back up because it didn't make this list but Wall Street bets loves them some Tesla and Elon Musk. So that's a side note. You know, if you guys can afford to get you a, get your hands on some Tesla while it's not on the list, because for all we know, we might wake up Wednesday and Tesla's on the list. Get you some Tesla, <laughs> get some Amazon, get some Walmart, get all these gross stocks because they're all in the red. You buy when things are low, sell when they go high. But in order to do that, to that might be a good, that might be a good buying opportunity if they put it on the list. 
because oh, the that, way they're doing it now, where you can only buy one share at a time, but they're allowing you to sell. Right. That's great because then it suppresses the price. Well, you know? it, it does, but at the same time, it's, it's, it's upsetting because when you have one of the bigger brokerages that has 35 million customers and you know that only so many stocks are going to come from there, it does exactly what you said, Larry. It stifles the price in the overall marketplace, which we don't want that. That's the problem we're having with Robinhood. And that's how it's helping these hedge funds catch back up, get back in the fold, and keep doing what they've been doing. But ladies and gentlemen, the other part of this puzzle is where do you go if you're frustrated with Robinhood? So I've handpicked three companies, one of them owned by a minority, that you can go to that seem to have a good interface, there's no commission fees, anything like that. And I've asked a couple of people who have these apps, how was the trading and what went through? So first one on this list, me and Larry was in the, we was in the chat room talking to someone about this. So Fidelity, ladies and gentlemen, um, from everything I've, I've read about Fidelity, they let you do after hours trading for free. They did not submit to the bull jive of limiting stocks anytime. Now they might change tunes this week, but all the last week they stayed in the game. That's their um, fee structure. Um, they don't charge anything except for con option contracts. Now I'm not really feeling that, but at the same time, I wouldn't mind paying 65 cents just to open the option contract if Robinhood would have let me get my damn put on GameStop because I would have made 15 grand Thursday. So that's not a bad trade off. Next on the list, our man E Man's got this one. This is E Trade, ladies and gentlemen. They're doing the same thing. They charge you 65 cents for options. And most of you guys aren't to the point where you're doing futures and bonds. You're just doing stocks and ETFs. And if you look at that, there's no fee on that. And from everything I've seen, people seem to like their interface. Last but definitely not least, we've got one called Doe. This one is owned by a brother down in Atlanta. And it looks like this. Everything is free on this app, everything. But the problem with this app, ladies and gentlemen, the problem that gets me with this app is that it does not have a computer interface. And that's a problem mm. for me. But if you are a new investor and you just want to reach out your phone, you can do it right here on this app. And the guy that owns it is the brother on the, if you're looking at the screen, he's on the right-hand side. He was actually on CNBC just the other day. And one more bonus one for you guys. It's called Tasty Works. Um, they seem to have a pretty decent fee structure. They're on all your platforms. But this is what I don't like. They're charging you. If you're doing any kind of options, you're getting hit for a dollar. If you're doing micro options, you're getting hit for a dollar fifty. But your stocks and um, ETFs, they don't charge you anything for it. And then special special note to Cash App. Cash App did not shut down when the cryptos was going on, and they did not shut people down from buying apps. I mean, buying stocks just the other week. So those are some good ones you guys can look at if you need to have a backup to Robinhood or you just plan to jump ship altogether. If I didn't mention you, you probably was in on the bull job last week and you was limiting people's ability to make money under a capitalism, which I was told, Larry, is the greatest system on all the planet. It's great until everybody gets to participate, huh? It's great that we all get to participate, but when only a handful get to participate, it's the greatest system. So, Nate, what's your backup system, or are you looking at getting into a backup system for your trading? Well, I've, I've been sticking with uh, Robin Hood, but I'm I'm open to I'm open to moving, and usually I just have my my play my play stocks in Robinhood. Smart, but. smart, exactly smart. Larry, what you gonna do, my man? You've been telling me for weeks. You're just like Lamont. You need to have a backup, and so I go get a I go get the backup. Larry had I go get TD Ameritrade, and they was in on the scam too. So Larry, what you what you gonna do? Yeah, man, I think I might I think I might dip out of Robinhood. I I, I this is what I'm thinking, right? Mm -hmm. I like Robinhood because I like the way they have their options chain laid out. It's very, very easy to read and mm -hmm. understand. Right. But I think what I might do is just simply keep a little bit of money in there so I can have the account open. Right. And, and 
so I can just utilize their service for that and then just trade with someone else. Because I have I have TD as my main brokerage, but they screwed us over too. Yeah. And he's had some issues in the last couple, you know, last couple of months where you can't when trade activity is really high and you can't access the app. And it's just it's yeah. been really wonky. So I don't know. I might dip out. I was really I was, you know, I've been thinking about E-Trade, but I think I might go with Fidelity. It seemed like Fidelity was was on the up and up during this whole thing. So yeah, yeah. Um, Everybody who's had Fidelity, Larry, has told me nothing but good. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody I might, on Fidelity. Yeah, I might just open up a uh I think that's the E-Trade one that you have open. Oh no, that is a Fidelity one. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I might just open up a an account with just a small amount of money over there just to uh just to get a uh an idea of what it looks like. Right. I really wish they would let you um I really wish they would let you just sort of open a like a paper trade account. Mm -hmm. on these brokerages so that you can see what the actual platform looks like, you know, but, you know, I may just throw a small amount in there just so I can open it up, you okay. know, so I do like that question. dough though. I like the dough account where you can, you know, it, it like looks nice. black business and all. So I'm, you know, yeah. I maybe might, uh, I might grab them. Okay. So Elaine Perry's asking, what about Webull? Um, Elaine, I've heard people say good things about Webull, but the problem was they shut, they restricted being able to buy these stocks last week as well. They just didn't, they just didn't start um, first. They came in right behind Robinhood and they restricted it, but then they did open it back up quicker than the rest of them did. So basically Robinhood shut it down first and was the last to open it back up and still restricting. TD, Swab, Webull, they all kind of followed Robinhood's lead and then by Friday, when the smoke was clearing a little bit, everybody decided to open and run out in front of cameras and microphones and take pictures and say, we believe in capitalism. Uh, we didn't shut our system down. We just restricted yada, yada, yada when they was just all full of SHIT. They all limited it. And then they all tried to say that the one that they kept telling people was we just restricted our margin. Now, I told Larry, it would have been perfectly fine if everybody would have restricted the margin so that folks can't literally gamble a credit line away and let people who are dealing with their money keep doing what they want to do. That is perfect. That doesn't restrict capitalism. That is perfect. But nobody done that. Um, yeah, that I mean, that was garbage to them saying that. I mean, yeah. I don't trade on margin. I trade with what I have in my account and they right. limited everything. Everything. It wasn't like it wasn't Everything. like they were just limiting to for people that were trading on margin. I, I mean, I've used my margin account once. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> I've never used mine. I've I've never used mine, and you know, my Robinhood account uh, took a hit because the stock market pulled back a little bit. But, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you that I think that the fear that has been stoked to the hedge funds might send us tumbling into a crash. I think what we saw this past week was the beginnings of an earthquake. We saw the little tremors. And now that Reddit has puffed their chest out and say, we have enough authority and ability to do this across 50 some odd stocks. I think we're really about to see the hedge funds get upset, start retrieving money, and we're going to see the market crash for a short bit. And when it does crash, ladies and gentlemen, just buy up all the best companies. <laughs> That's it. What do you think, Nate? What do you what do you think is going to be some of the fallout from this? Yeah, what I mean, think, let Nate? it happen. I'll, I'll I'll jump in. That's right. definitely a ball uh, buy opportunity. But yeah, I agree with you. Um, mm -hmm. you know, they they don't like losing money, and so they're going to try to flex their chest too. And so, mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. mind that. Yep, yep. You know, because all three of us on this panel, yes, we do believe in getting a quick cash grab, but we also all invest long term. Because we all young as hell. Nobody on this panel is older than 42, <laughs> believe me. And we're yeah. all trying to be living and jumping off, jumping out of airplanes, skiing down the Alps. <laughs> we're in our 70s. So we do have holdings for long term. And what you're getting ready to see is billionaires upset and they're going to pull their money only to create a new opportunity for retail investors to buy some of these excellent companies like Amazon, Tesla, Neo, Workhorse for a very, very discounted price. Because at some point in time, ladies and gentlemen, they're going to put their money back in. That's just the way the system works. And fellas, I got one final story for you. There was one very, very wealthy dude who got burnt because he had heavy puts on GameStop. You want to know who he is? 
Y'all seen the cry face several times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Michael Jordan got burnt because y'all have heard the term Citadel as one of those middlemen between a lot of these brokerages. Well, check this out. Michael Jordan is bleeding money after finding himself in the middle of the Reddit-fueled GameStop war that has stunned Wall Street. Jordan could not have picked a worse time to welcome hedge fund giant Gabe Platokin and Daniel Sutton as investors in the Hornets. Both men are reported to have taken catastrophic losses with the ongoing war between hedge fund managers and amateur investors reportedly wiping more than $5 billion from established hedge funds. Jordan's business partner, Platokin, and his Melvin Capital, you guys heard that on CNBC as being a middleman, fund have been aggressively against GameStop by short selling its shares, meaning they stood to gain if the price went down and lost if it went up. <laughs> Nate, I give it to you first. They Damn, said okay. Michael Jordan, they, right. They said <laughs> look, they said Michael Jordan's net worth went from 1.9 billion to 1.6. Oh, that hurts. You know, <laughs> it's like like Larry, like. I could see if his net worth was 24000 and it went down to 19000 That's pain. Believe yeah. me, people. That's pain and suffering. <clears throat> but to go from 1.6, and I'm a Michael Jordan fan now. I love what he's done after his career in the community. But, Larry, are you, are you shedding tears? Are you up here giving cry faces because the man has lost, what, $0.3 billion? No. All he needs to do is go buy some Tesla stock and wait six months. He'll make all that $300 million back. Larry, you better hush because Larry, they might consider that insider trading. They, they might consider that insider trading, Larry. We're, we're saying people should go buy Tesla and the stock is going to go up in six months. We, it, I mean, <laughs> come on, man. I mean, I get it. It. I mean, to, to everybody else, losing three, and probably to him too, losing $300 million seems like a lot of money. But when you... <laughs> <laughs> but when you lose three hundred million dollars and your net worth is still over one and a half billion, I mean, you're not going to find probably anybody outside of that that one percent of the one percent that are going to feel bad for them. Because I'm thinking, come on, man, give me one percent of your losses, and I'd be set for the rest of my life. Right. You know? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And Larry, like I said, I'm still. I'm going to stick with Robin Hood. I'm going to chop this up as a growing pain for Robin Hood. But I'm still mortally wounded by them because, like I said, I stood to have gained at the very least on Thursday when the stock dropped. I would have been up twelve dollars to $15,000. Yeah. And, and I'm still hurt by them, but I'm going to hang in there because I have dreams that I'll be standing beside these guys when they finally fix everything, get it together, and we'll be ringing that bell for their IPO together. I'll be there representing y'all, my homies, because we done got this thing fixed when they go IPO, but it's not going to happen this year. Mm -mm. No, I think if it was going to happen this year, they're going to have to push it back now because they need to get the stink off of them. Exactly. You know? Exactly. There is no way in hell. Hell could freeze over. That IPO cannot happen this year. Unless, Larry, now I can tell you how I can fix, but we know this is not going to happen. Everyone who tried to make an order on those days, if Robin Hood would give them the equivalent of the money that they lost, by not getting into the stock that day or who tried to do options that day, and they've got a record of this, if they would compensate those people, that would begin to help get the stink off of them. But if they've got liquidity issues, they ain't doing that. They're not going to do that. Yeah. No, I think, I, think what, I think Robin Hood, what they'll probably end up doing because of this, if they go public, mm -hmm. when they go public, is they'll probably, they'll probably switch over and say, we're no longer going to do a direct listing we're going to go the old school route because now they can oh. turn around to the rest of the wall street and say, look, we're one of you. We were protecting all of you. We had to shut our own users off to protect you big hedge funds. We're mm -hmm. one of you. And then they'll say, yeah, okay, we can get out with you guys now. And they'll go ahead and they'll fund their IPO and, and they'll get the share price of $20 or something. And then when it finally goes live, it'll be up at like, you know, 45 or 50, and the little guys will get screwed just like they did here. I, I, 
I mean, I feel like Robin Hood was being was being presented as like this this brokerage for for the little guy, for the mm-hmm. average everyday retail investor. And the the fact of the matter is, is they're no different from any other big Wall Street brokerage house. Right, right. Um, I've, got a, I've got a question in the super chat. And ladies and gentlemen, whenever you super chat this channel, we give you a funny video. But before I give this person the funny video, I'm going to answer his question. He wants to know, where do I go buy dog coin? Well, first of all, I'm going to tell you to stay away from dog coin. Did you see the pullback that happened to it? I mean, they pulled that joint back. It was up 300% Friday, and by this weekend, it had gone back down like almost 290. But if you must have it, Cash App is doing cryptos, and I think they had dog coin. Um, if you want to go that route, and Coinbase, ladies and gentlemen, is getting ready to go IPO. I forgot to mention that. Larry sent me the link that they're going yeah. IPO. And for you, AMK, try the Cash App first, and then if that doesn't work, hit me on the gram. So I've got a, a pretty timely video for you. Because we like to show our subscribers support. And this one has Michael Jordan written all over it. And it's one of my favorite theme songs from the 90s. See? <laughs> See how your boy got your back? This <laughs> is Life Games on the Lamont Tyson channel. I appreciate you for that super chat, my friend. <laughs> We're going to get out of here, ladies and gentlemen. That is your stock market game plan for Monday to summarize everything we did. Buy the dip on your favorite companies. Go back through this video. Check out the 50 stocks I showed you. They're all great buying opportunities right now because it looks like the Reddit boys are going to try to pump up a handful of those. Go back and watch the video for the ones I mentioned are good for short term and long term and decide which one of these strategies you're going to take to invest. And also check out a backup to Robinhood so that you can keep investing without having to worry about if someone is going to limit or stifle your ability to participate in free market capitalism or at least free for some of us, as they say. So you know what? I, I still don't understand this with Robinhood. Is like why they're limiting people to buying one share or one contract option, if one one option contract, if you have the money in your account. Because I, I Larry, it. they don't have the money in their account. <laughs> well, that's what they should say. They should simply say you can only buy if you actually have the funds to act to to make the purchase you can't maybe you can't you can only buy one share or one or one options contract on margin or something but you can't you i mean if you have the money in your account you should be able to buy as much as you want well it's not it's not us it's them they don't have the liquidity to follow up if someone decides to come in there and buy 50 shares of said said stocks and those stocks all of a sudden just go up 20% within the week, they can't cover that, Larry. That's why they're limiting these stocks because Reddit has marked these stocks that we just showed in this video as potentials to blow up. And they're trying to cover their asses. And I'm frustrated with them. I have over a $200,000 account with Robinhood. I've been in their good graces. And I need to talk to somebody. I really do. Because I'm having trauma. And if you don't want me to start threatening that I had mental trauma, somebody from Robin Hood need to call my ass and tell me what they're going to do to make me feel better. Simple as that. So, fellas, I want to get one stop, one stop pick from each one of you guys, and then we'll get out of here. Thank you, everybody that tuned in to us as we give you your Monday morning quarterback stop game plan. Nate, give everybody one stop that you really believe in. Uh, well, I believe long term always in Microsoft. It's done very well for me. Apple has too, but but Microsoft. And because I why, see it every day. I, yeah. I, I see how much money I'm sending them, so I see what they're making. 
<laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, I bought I bought a long call on Microsoft, and it's up. I'm up like a thousand dollars or something like that. I bought a long call on Microsoft two weeks ago before the earnings report. Larry, give everybody one good long stock that you believe in. One good long stock, huh? Yeah, and and Larry, do not say Levi jeans. Do not say <laughs> Levi jeans. Do not get. I like if, Levi's, man. Yeah, I like Levi's it. trousers. Oh, God, I Jesus. like them. I think that I think that the more I think the more that that this pandemic goes on, and the more the culture changes from people having to go into the office to staying at home and working. I think Levi is going to continue to grow. People, oh. Levi is a is a is a time tested age old brand. Everybody knows. Here, here's the thing: when this is this is when they they always talk about this is when you know that a brand is successful is when it becomes a verb. When you want to get a ride what? share, nobody says you're going to get a lift or you're going to get a a, a easy car, or easy go. They say, are you going to Uber it? When you want to go get a soda, they say, do you have a Coke? No, we have Pepsi. Same thing. I just meant you have a soda, you know? And when people are talking about jeans, they talk about Levi's. What? You know? That's oh. just the way it you know, is. Um, you know, I think Levi might be a might be a verb. Is, we're, let's see here in Utah, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. In Utah, yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you live in Utah, you get you some Levi's. So is that your pick, Larry? You going with Levi? I'm going with Levi's, man. I, I like Levi's long. I like Levi's short, and I like them long. Okay. Well, y'all know. Y'all already know what brought me to the dance. I'm riding with them. Tesla, ladies and gentlemen. They dropped down under $100. If you could afford to buy a call that lasts at least three months, I would buy that call tomorrow immediately because not only are they favored, they're favored by hedge funds. They're favored by Reddit. Um, you know, it, you just can't go wrong with them. They're short term and they're long term. If you can afford it, get yourself some Tesla. So we're out of here, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget to like the video, comment, subscribe. Go check out the Black Investor Stock Group on Facebook. Link is in the description. Um, check me and Larry both out on Instagram. Check out our YouTube channels. Thank you to our subscriber, Nate, my homie, my Tesla buddy. We're going to give him a clap for coming on board. And if you want to join me and Larry, you want to join me and Larry one Sunday night to talk about the game plan for the week, hit us up and we'll see if we can get you up here. There is no show next week because I will be from a remote location reporting on the Super Bowl. So y'all want to stay tuned ah. for that live. You never know who I might pull up there with me. Until that next Sex is Hell video, which will be tomorrow when we cover Marvel and WandaVision, we'll see you. Peace. Peace.